Um, as I said, I'm Marcy Young, Communications Manager, and we appreciate you being here today. We know it's early, um, but we're happy you're here. It's my pleasure to introduce the president of Lone Star College Kingwood, which is Dr. Melissa Gonzalez, and she'll be leading our program today. Please welcome her to the program. Thank you so much. Wow, I know it's early, but I believe that this is the best time because you're gonna be motivated, inspired, and just really happy the rest of your day, I'm sure. And, and we have a special guest. Well, I wanna say hello to Cody back there. <laughs> thank you, Cody, for being here. Um, I wanna thank you so much for taking the time. I know that time is uh, one thing we can never get back and you chose to be here with us on this very special occasion. It is my honor and pleasure to serve as the president of Lone Star College Kingwood. And it's been, it's gonna be three years, June 1st. I cannot believe it. I'm gonna be celebrating my third year anniversary here. And as they say that uh, when you're having fun, time flies, it really does. So again, thank you so much for the opportunity to serve. And you know, we are here because it is time for recognitions, a time to be grateful. And this is like my favorite time of the year because there's a lot of celebrations happening and this is one of them. This kind of kicks off the season. So again, I just wanna thank everyone here, the donors especially. We have leadership, we have administrators, we have staff, we have community, we have families, and then more importantly, we have our students. So let's give everyone a round of applause for taking the time. So exciting. And so, and you know, Without the donors, without scholarships, a lot of dreams wouldn't be happening. And I truly believe that with dreams, it's just what makes us get up in the morning. <laughs> you know, when, you have, when you're working towards something, it kind of helps you take that next step. It, get, it helps you wake up and, and let's go, and, and it reminds you of the whatever it is you're going through and whatever it is, it's gonna be happening. And scholarships are, a, are the, the, the mechanism to kind of break down those barriers that sometimes are there. So again, this is why we're here. We're here to celebrate, and, and, and I just cannot express my gratitude to all the donors and to everyone that makes this possible. So a huge congratulations to the students, and you're gonna be inspired. We have four amazing students that will be speaking, and so we are uh, very grateful for their time. Um, before we get going, I want to thank Andres Artis Muño Milan, who provided our beautiful arrangements as our guests arrived this morning. So thank you so much. Andres is a student in our music program. He is from Venezuela and is a recipient of the LHMAS Dudley and Melanie Cavanaugh Endowed Scholarship. So um, congratulations, Andres, and thanks for sharing your amazing talent with us. I would also like to thank hometown chef catering and their staff for providing this lovely breakfast this morning. So let's give it up for the food. Have you been enjoying your food? I also want to take a moment to recognize our Lone Star College Board of Trustees who have joined us today. Uh, Dr. Jim Kane is here. Thank you so much, Dr. Kane. Is the, and is uh, Mike Sullivan here? He's not here? Okay, good. He was planning to come here. Um, we also have some cabinet members, some of my colleagues. Um, uh, Ms. Bridget Johnson, Johnson, she's here. Thank you so much, Bridget, for being the Executive Vice Chancellor of Operations. And is Mr. Ben Melson here? Not yet, all right, good. Um, all right, so thank you again for taking the time to join us. And also, um, we have a foundation board and we have some of their members here, so let's try to, let's recognize them. The board of directors uh, is uh, Dr. An Nguyen here, An Lan Nguyen. Yes, thank you so much. Is Dr. Alton Smith here? Alton Smith? No. Uh, James Harrison, board chair. Dr. Pamela Hernandez. I saw. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mr. Alim Adetia. Not here. Mr. Jesse Rios. I know some. Yeah. Thank you, Jesse. Mr. Stuart Barnett. Barrett. Sorry. Sorry about that. And of course, I like to recognize the members of our Lone Star College Foundation staff. Ms. Susan Summers is here. Thank you so much, Susan. And our. Um, Director, Executive Director for the Lone Star College Foundation, Ms. Nicole robinson Gautier. she's here. And so I would like to introduce her. She has done a tremendous job. We just uh, finished our gala, and it was an amazing uh, event. Again, thanks to her and her team. Um, she has done a great job in fundraising for all of our eight colleges. 
Founded in 1991, the Lone Star College Foundation has provided $23.2 million in scholarships to more than 24,500 students, as well as more than $10 million in program support since its inception. So please, let's welcome Ms. Nicole robinson Gautier. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, um, and thank you to you and your team. Always do a great job. It's so fun to come into this room and see it so full. I went over this way, and there were already people like early on sitting at this side of the room, and I love it. I love that it's a crowd this big to celebrate donors and students. Um, it's, it's always a good day to celebrate. Um, we had a great time celebrating uh, Saturday night at Star Gala. I do want to recognize another board member and the Star Gala chair, Ms. Paula Mendoza, who's right here. Thank you, Paula. Um, we celebrate at the party, but it's for a good cause, and so I want to make sure you know that. So another thing we got to celebrate, and can I steal your thunder, or are you going to tell them? Okay. <laughs> Um, you're going to meet Nicola in a few minutes, but she spoke as she represented all of you as the student speaker at Star Gala, and it was wonderful. She did a great job, um, but we surprised her. She didn't know, but we had arranged, um, because she wants to continue her education after she graduates in how many days? 19, 19 days. <laughs> Um, we surprised her with a transfer scholarship to the University of Houston downtown, so she will be continuing her education. It was really fun to be able to do that, and just know that she represented all of you beautifully at Star Gala. Um, so, uh, you heard a little bit about the foundation, and you heard my thank yous, but I'll tell you a little bit more if this page will turn. There we go. Um, so last year, we were thrilled to be able to raise, uh, to award more than $2.6 million in scholarships to more than 2,500 students, right? Thank you. We're pretty proud of that. Our goal is to grow that every year. So hopefully this room, you know, maybe someday won't be big enough. How about that as a goal? That's a good goal. Um, another thing is that we, we awarded almost a million dollars in program and emergency support. And we're finding that program and emergency support has become almost as important as tuition and fees um, scholarships. Because if you get tuition covered but you can't buy the math book, it's going to be really hard to get through math. And so we have a number of those scholarships that will help. And Saturday night at this gala, we also uh, launched a new, added another fund in a way we're going to support students in a new way. And um, it's called food scholarships because we know that hungry students can't learn no matter what grade they're in, kindergarten or grad school. And so we've launched, we have donors that are going to help start, pay, start helping to pay for meal plans. Because now that the cafeteria or the food, food court is open on campus, um, we're going to work on making sure that those, some of those are covered. Because we want you to be successful. And so our goal is to remove any obstacle out of your path of success. Right? You've got a lot of it. This is, I got like my own personal cheerleader here. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I love that. Um, we just, we want you to be successful. We know you've got a lot of work to do. Life throws us enough curveballs. We don't need to add to those. And so we know those are really important. Um, so here are a few stats that are my favorites that I, I always look up every year. Um, and when I say I look up, I'll give credit. It's not me. There's a whole wonderful team at the foundation, and they look up this information for me. Um, but of the 2022-23 graduates, more than 2,000 of those students had received Lone Star College Foundation scholarships at some point in their college career at Lone Star. And we're really proud. We get to be a part of your journey and their journey. And here's a little success stat for you. Um, Lone Star College Foundation scholarship recipients will round up and call it a 3.3 GPA. They have an average, you, not they, you have an average of a 3.3 GPA as compared to the non-scholarship students that have a 2.8. So we know you're working hard and we're here to cheer for you. And if you don't meet your donor today, meet a donor and say thank you. And donors, if your student is not here today or you're not sitting with them just yet, Chat with the students. Everyone has a unique story about why they funded a scholarship 
and the students have a unique story about what they're doing, and so we just, we're excited to share that with you. Um, there will be, they've got it all set up with photos, they'll tell you all about that later, but the most important thing is today is um, to celebrate one another. Celebrate the donors who made something possible, who didn't know that you would be in this room, but wanted to, wanted to be here for whoever would be in your chair. So thanks for being with us early this morning. Thanks for all that you do, um, and congratulations. All right, thank you, Nicole, so much. All right, so we are going to um, take a moment to honor all our donors here today. And so, um, again, I think in the past we've just asked you all to stand up and um, I, we really want to recognize each of you, and so um, I have a list of the people who are here, and um, so if I do miss somebody, I do apologize, and we'll, I'm going to make sure that our students know who's here, and um, so we do can take pictures afterwards. Uh, Jennifer Aubain. Yes, she's here. Thank you, Jennifer. She's a former Lone Star College employee. Yes, thank you. We have uh, Carol Prince from the Northeast Hospital Foundation Healthcare Education Fund. Yes, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Dr. Fiona Campbell is here representing the respiratory care faculty. Pat Chandler, she uh, has a continuing education administration scholarship. Thank you, Pat, as also our executive director for our CE program. Um, Dr. Coyote, Lone Star College Kingwood Faculty Senate President, representing Faculty Senate. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ms. Christy Dalton, the LSE Kingwood Dental Hygiene our Director, and she also represents that scholarship. <laughs> Pam Dixon with the David and Pamela Dixon Scholarship. Pam, thank you so much, Pam. Also from Mission Northeast. We have uh, Andira Hawkins from the Chevron Phillips Chemical Company. Andira, yes, thank you so much for being here. We have uh, Ms. Bridget Johnson from Lowestar College Kingwood OTS Family and Friends Scholarship. Thank you so much. And OTS Veterans in Technology also. Judy Mo Monahan from the Monahan Family Scholarship. Thank you so much, Ms. Monahan. Thank you so much. Uh, well, you know this familiar face, Dr. Catherine Pearson and Andrew Pearson from the Catherine and Andrew Pearson Scholarship. Thank you so much for being here. Mary Jane Scher from Friends at Lone Star College Kingwood. I saw her this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Rebecca Cron from PBK Architects. Rebecca? Yes, thank you so much. Jason and Damaris Watson, the Damaris Watson Scholarship. Thank you so much. Yes, Jason also works with us. Thank you so much. And that's the only ones I, I have been given. Is there any other donor here that I unfortunately missed? We're good? Okay, good, awesome, thank you so much. Again, let's give a round of applause to our donors. And I also, oh, again, this is not done by ourselves, like, like Nicole mentioned about how, you know, we set up, we had a great little setup here. We're so happy that you're here. We always, this is important to us. So I just wanna thank the staff and um, the, the, the team, the faculty, all from Lone Star College, Kingwood. Let's, can, can we all stand up? It's hard to name everybody. Can we stand up and let everybody see, like, you know, our team here? So let's stand up, all the deans and the faculty, staff that are here. Thank you so much. Um, the College Relations Department that are here to help and make this possible. We couldn't have done it without you, so thank you so much for, um, for everything you're, uh, you're doing. All right, so you're like, okay, Melissa, when do the students come? It's coming, I promise you. Um, let me share with you that, um, you know, there's so many students as you see here, and it's so hard to select, and these are students that uh, really have made a, a huge impact in our college. Um, a lot of them, all of them are leaders in our community, are leaders at the campus, and a lot of their students look up to them, and it's amazing that we have uh, so many students that are very well deserving of not just scholarship, but just recognitions. And um, it just gets me motivated to see them and, and to see their future. And you know what, we're part of that journey and that, that 
makes me so happy and really satisfied that what we do is really change lives. And you're gonna hear them for yourselves. And so I'm so excited that, um, that they are here to share their stories with, with you all and to share the impact that these scholarships do in their lives. So um, we're gonna get started with Dontavia St. Julian. Dontavia is the recipient of the Marjorie H. Hall Scholarship. Her story demonstrates how with enough determination, nothing can get in the way of your dreams, even if it takes a little bit longer than anticipated. So thank you so much, Dontavia, and we're excited to have you come on over. Thank you, Dontavia. Thank you. Great. Yes, yes. Good morning, everyone. All right, so can you hear me? To start off, I would like to share a quote from American entrepreneur Jim Ron, and that is that I live by and motivates me every day to continue thriving, and that is life doesn't get easier, you just get better. And with that quote, it motivates me to be better every single day. I'm talking to you today to express my gratitude in being a recipient of the Marjorie H. Hall Shepherd Scholarship and how it has helped me to become better. Now, to properly introduce myself, my name is Dontavia St. Julian, and I'm from the Cajun city of Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, growing up, education was always a priority in my household, and my parents made sure I attended the best art academy schools possible from elementary to high school, where I could have many opportunities. Once I graduated high school, I moved here to Houston and attended Texas Southern University. My first year was great. I maintained good grades while working two jobs and still had time to be involved a bit on campus. Unfortunately, I hit a roadblock right before the announcement of the worldwide pandemic and decided I would just take a break from school and that little break turned into four years. In the summer of 2023, I decided it was time for me to go back to school and I didn't think a big university was best for me to go back since I had been out of school for a few years. In that search for a good community college that would still give me opportunities and help me get back on track, I found Lone Star Kingwood. That decision was one of the best I could have made, and I can proudly say I would not have changed anything about my experience here. Since I have attended Lone Star, I have met some of the best and supportive staff members. This includes my history professor, Steve Davis, the manager of the Career and Transfer Center, Ms. Crystal Archie, uh, Mr. Al Dorsey, Dean of Student Life, and the hardworking admissions department of which I am a work-study student, and especially Dr. Melissa Gonzalez, who gave me this opportunity to speak here today. Now, in the few semesters here at Lone Star, I have been able to achieve the President's Honors List, become a member of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, member of the Black Student Union, and founder and president of the Career and Transfer Center Registered Student Organization. So you can definitely say I am busy, but every part of being involved on campus just gives me more opportunities and puts me in a position to help others, like being a recipient of this scholarship. This scholarship has helped me further my education and take the next steps to become successful. My future plans are to become a member of our great NASA company or Eczema Space where I dream of becoming an astronomer. I graduate this upcoming May and I plan on transferring to a university and majoring in physics. Being the scholarship recipient has helped me pay the dues of classes and needed textbooks and materials for my classes while also applying to schools that I think are a fit for me, which include my top choice, the University of Texas at Austin and other schools which are Texas A&M University, Sam Houston State, Texas State, University of Texas at San Antonio, Stephen F. Austin, and the University of Houston. And so far, I've been accepted into four of these universities. I'm um, beyond, <laughs> thank you. So I'm beyond happy and proud to be a member of the community of Lone Star, where our motto is start close and go far. And that is exactly what I plan to do. I know as I become successful, I will, I will be back to Kingwood to support and hopefully give the same opportunities to students who will be in the same shoes I'm standing in now. I'm beyond grateful to be able to be the recipient of this scholarship because I view it as a stepping stone into my career and motivates me to keep me going because I know all the hard work, long nights and early mornings are so worth it when you have donors like you who are rooting for a good scholar and give their support. I hope hearing my story motivates supportive donors to keep donating and supporting the students of this great community here at Lone Star to achieve their dreams and make their journey a bit easier and give students that extra push to keep going, to always give their best and know there is a community standing behind them. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, thank you, you're great. All right, wasn't that awesome? 
Dreams, dreams. Wow, amazing. Thank you, Dontavia. That is so awesome. All right, our next speaker today is from the respiratory care program. I, there was a little, we already did a little glimpse in, uh, about her. We're so excited that uh, she was chosen as one of the Chancellor's Essays Contest Scholarship winner. She was also represented as, like, like uh, uh, Nicole mentioned, at, at the gala. And her road to Lone Star College was also fraught with frustration and even heartbreaking loss. But she is uh, resilient, and she's a winner, and she's here. And Nicola Merritt joins us today to share her story. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Education has always been deeply ingrained in my family dynamic. My mother set high standards for academic achievements, and fortunately, I had a genuine passion for learning, which made it easier. However, things took a turn when I reached high school. Now don't get me wrong, high school was great. I enjoyed countless memorable moments, excelled academically, immersed myself in extracurricular activities like band, various academic clubs, engaged in UIL events, and even assumed leadership roles as a class officer for multiple years. With honors like membership in the National Honor Society, recognition as a Texas scholar, and graduating in the top 10% of my class, the doors to any Texas university swung wide open. Despite this, I chose to attend a different university instead of pursuing the one I had dreamed of since freshman year, a decision I would regret profoundly. After just one semester on a full academic scholarship, I made the faithful choice to abandon my studies during Christmas break and never returned. I didn't even have a good reason for leaving. What followed were years of grappling with various jobs, plagued by a sense of failure, as obtaining a degree had always been a cherished aspiration. Despite my detour, life continued. I got married, started a family, relocated, but the dream of education lingered, overshadowed by fear. A decade passed, and the prospect of returning to school seemed daunting. I was in a different state, clueless about where to start, overwhelmed by the logistics of transcripts, financial aid applications, balancing work, studies, and motherhood. For years, I allowed my apprehensions to hold me back. Then, in 2018, tragedy struck. The loss of a loved one, coupled by the dissolution of my marriage, thrust me into a moment of reckoning. As I stood helpless, watching my best friend slip away, unable to administer CPR, I resolved to never be ill-equipped to save a life again. With the newfound determination, I made the impulsive decision to return to my hometown of Texas. Securing employment to support my daughter, who's here today, I found myself, I found myself disillusioned at 31, toiling at a fast food establishment. Eventually, I landed a better job, but it was grueling physical labor. And one day, as I laced up my steel toe boots to go drive a forklift, I knew I couldn't endure this indefinitely. It was time for a change. Over the following year, I scoured community college options in Houston, eventually finding Lone Star, a beacon of hope with its accessible program offerings and affordable tuition. After navigating the administration hurdles, I embarked on my first day of school in nearly 15 years. Fast forward to today, April 2024, with just 19 days until our pending ceremony for completing a respiratory care program, and I've never felt more fulfilled. <laughs> the journey was not easy. Reacclimating to studying was not instinctive, and I definitely had to withdraw from a biology class my first semester. <laughs> Between the demands of the program, the impact of COVID-19, and numerous other obstacles, quitting seemed tempting at times. Yet at 36, this degree is personal, a promise to myself to finish what I started all those years ago. As the program draws to a close, I'm cognizant that this isn't the culmination of my educational odyssey. A lifelong learner at heart, Lone Star College has instilled in me the belief that anything is achievable, thanks to the unwavering support of our chancellor, counselor, professors, directors, particularly mine, who's here today, Dr. Fiona Campbell, and you, the selfless donors who help students like me. I'm proud to say that my next chapter in includes pursuing a degree in business management with a focus in healthcare administration at the University of Houston downtown. <laughs> I am beyond grateful and would like to take a moment to thank everybody who has played a role in all the opportunities and experiences that have been afforded to me since winning the Chancellor's Essay Scholarship Contest. It is my mission to pay it forward. 
urging young adults to embrace education and encouraging my peer, peers my age that it's never too late. Education transcends age and circumstance. It's a journey open to all, irrespective of background or timeline. As Oprah Winfrey once said, education is the key to unlocking the world. It is truly the passport to freedom. Thank you. Nicole is going on a speaking tour. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amazing. And thank you for your daughter for joining us. Thank you so much. How exciting. Um, and I, again, I, I want to, uh, just a, a small little uh, interruption of the little program. I want to make sure and um, acknowledge our trustee, Mike Sullivan, who's here. Thank you, Mike Sullivan. And Dr. Alton Smith, who made it. Thank you so much. And then Paula, thank I am so sorry. She's my friend. We were texting last night, and I forgot you. I'm so sorry. So my apologies. I'm still nervous. I get nervous, guys. I still get nervous. Oh, all right. Okay, we're going to continue again. Thank you so much. We're, we're, I'm just so excited. These stories are so uh, just uh, inspiring. And for me, again, it just it's just like, yes, we're, we're doing good stuff here. And thank you so much for sharing, Nicola. So we have another winner for our Chancellor's Essay Contest Scholarship, John Paul Marconi. He is here, a member of the Honors College, and says being a member of the organization has changed his life. Thanks for being here. John Paul, excited to hear from you. Hi, my name is John Paul Marconi, and I'm so excited to be here today. And thank you for the donors that provided me a scholarship to fund my education. Um, uh, I was I was initially um, I was initially offered a, a full ride here at Lone Star College Kingwood, but because of the government, uh, they had taken away my my grants that I'd been promised, and uh, this left me in a hole because it. It really, it really let me down because I thought that I could, you know, have a, like a better, like I wish I uh, had been offered what the government had given me. But anyways, I want to share my story with you guys today uh, about my story at uh, Lone Star College, Kingwood. And here, uh, I'm a graduate of Kingwood High School, and I've always considered community college as a potential option for obtaining a higher education. Many students assume that community college is a downgrade from a four-year university because of its higher acceptance rate and lower funding. To be honest, th this is what I had thought when I was applying to Lone Star College Kingwood. And I, as I misinterpreted the correlation between educational expenses and educational value. When I was contemplating my future, I decided to apply to the Lone Star Honors College so I could get the most out of my experience at, at Lone Star. It turned out that joining the Honors College at Lone Star was a better decision than going to a four-year university because it has provided me with numerous opportunities to become a competitive transfer applicant to top-tier universities. Within the first semester, I was able to become an apprentice for the Honors College Leadership Program, join the Rice Take Flight STEM program, and start writing two outstanding research papers, all while taking 14 credit hours towards my biomedical engineering uh, degree. Since writing this paper, I've been given the opportunity uh, to uh, present my research at the Great Plains Honors Council hosted by Oklahoma State University. What I appreciate most about the Honors College at Kingwood are its coordinators, Dr. Nicholson, Dr. Barr, Ms. Sadik, and the Honors College Leadership Program led by honor students uh, who work tirelessly to foster a thriving community within the Honors College that I am proud to be a part of. In addition, the Honors College awarded me a scholarship to cover some of my classes and even free supplemental courses to prepare me for writing my honors research papers. What is truly remarkable about the Honors College is its dedication to preparing students for the challenges of undergraduate research. In reality, students in the Lone Star Honors College are just as, if not more, competent in research than juniors and seniors at four-year universities. So much so that my peers have made it to regional and national level conferences that I'm so, I'm so proud of those students. I've developed so many meaningful friendships within the Honors College, allowing me to engage in extracurricular activities beyond the classroom, such as attending conferences, volunteering, or going to sports games. Beyond the Honors College, which for the most part has defined my experience, uh, Lone Star College has, has the most exceptional janitorial staff I've ever seen. Uh, uh, 
What I'm truly trying to emphasize is that whether they are doctor level professors, office assistants, police officers, tutors, or janitorial staff, Lone Star College maintains a highly professional and organized approach of giving me a high level education and providing quality services without paying thousands of dollars for it. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I come to Lone Star College because it just has saved me so much money. And as I said, uh, it's just been a blessing. For example, it was 7.35 a.m. and I found myself rushing to class and accidentally locked my keys in the car. <sighs> my day was significantly better after I realized that I was at a college that has cared about each one of its students. So an advisor informed me that I could call the Lone Star Police for a free car lockout service. <sighs> that was a nice hundred dollars in my bank. Uh, um, so I was, I was so impressed. I was also so impressed at how well the Lone Star uh, Kingwood campus is kept, especially its greenery and landscaping, which allows me to fully embrace nature. Re just recently, a couple of my friends invited me to relax in the grass and sit in the sun. This is something I never thought I would do, but I, I was laying in the grass. <laughs> and it's just, it's just so peaceful. Uh, <laughs> Doing simple things like sitting in the grass or playing pool in the SEC up there allows me to be comfortable on campus with my friends, which makes the whole college life seem a little easier. In conclusion, so far as a freshman, I've had a remarkable experience at Lone Star. Furthermore, daily school interactions no longer feel like a chore like they used to, and instead I can just enjoy being a student who loves to learn. Thank you so much, everyone. Wow, that was awesome. And you know what? Thank you so much for reminding us what a beautiful place we have here. It's beautiful. Uh, I mean, it, it really is. I remember I was coming out of where it was late, and I was walking out. And of course, I was, you know, I just didn't, you know, I was just, you know, just, it's a long day. And somebody was coming in to the campus, and they said, do you work here? I'm like, yes, 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 how can I help you? She goes, no, you are so lucky. Look at the beautiful campus you work in. I'm like, oh my gosh, you forget, you forget. So thank you, John, for um, helping us and reminding us how, how lucky and grateful we are. So thank you so much, that was awesome. All right, we have one more speaker today. Abigail Dittman is the recipient of the Friends of Lone Star College Kingwood Endowment Scholarship. She's also the president of our SGA Student Government Association. She's a true leader on our campus, and we're so grateful to hear from her today. So welcome, Abigail. Good morning. I'm so excited to be with all of you today. I am beyond grateful for the Friends of Lone Star College Kingwood Endowment Scholarship and any other scholarships I have received. They have changed my life. If it was not for the scholarships I've received and the people along my path, I would not be where I am today, here, right now, in college. When I was in high school, I had dreams of going to college, but my finances showed me that that wasn't going to happen. As a first-generation student, I was timid to even look at the Lone Star representatives who visited my high school. I kept walking past them, and my wonderful high school counselors finally said, Abby, you need to apply for Lone Star. Go see them. They're here. I said, I listened, and I got to meet Nia and Jasmine, who are staff here, who guided me to apply and told me about the TRIO program. I still was scared, and I did not know what to do financially. I was an emotional basket case, and I didn't feel supported. Then one day, at the end of the year, my new Caney High School AP, Miss Wheeler, walked up to me, and she gave me a packet and it was a scholarship to Lone Star College. I cried in gratitude because I saw that they saw potential in me that I didn't fully believe. You might think, oh, what a sweet story. But there is always more to it. You see, many people know me here. They tell me, you must have it all together. You always smile. You're always on campus, active, and you know so many people. But let me be vulnerable for a second. This blazer that I'm wearing is thrifted. The smile comes and goes. Sometimes I isolate, sometimes I feel alone, and sometimes I feel overstimulated by the people I very love. Truthfully, I know what brokenness looks like. I've had experiences where I would never be able to tell a single soul. 
This life and this walk is not easy, but it is faith that leads me in the support system here that I can acknowledge that I'm not in it alone and I never will be. This is why I'm still here. This is my purpose to tell you, you have a purpose. While I am a student leader, I don't believe that I am higher or better than anyone else in this room. My position is replaceable and I am just a temporary human being with the voice and ears to listen and advocate for other students and people in general. My goal is not for you to remember me or my name, but to remember the impact that was made. What words and actions came from that girl that made an impact on my life? You're probably wondering why I'm going in so deep for a scholarship reception, but <laughs> here's why I'm explaining this to the scholarship recipients. Your scholarship is going toward a dream and a story that is so important to you that can impact someone else. You're going to be the reason someone finds the answer to the question that I was asked in my English 1302 class from Professor Fernandez, what does it mean to be human? Only you can answer that for yourself. For me, it means finding purpose, helping others, connection, vulnerability, heartbreak, and understanding people's stories. My college major is based on advocacy and business. I find that a big part of my value is helping others, and maybe that will be your value, and it will help your identity, too. It will help you find it. Our value is not placed in our past, our mistakes, or the labels that we place on ourselves. You are worth more than any struggle that you have faced, and treat everyone around you that same way. I'm going to end it on this note and use an example. I grew up going to the public library for fun, and my favorite part was getting 50 cent paperback books from the front bookshop. <laughs> Those books are used and sometimes well-worn, just like this one, and there may be free books without covers. Regardless, I read the books, and I got to know the story of the authors. No matter the price, I read the story. And the stories are what impacted me. You will be valued differently in different settings, but it is who decides to step into your story that matters to listen and understand. You may feel as if you are worthless because you are coming apart on the inside, but it is that struggle that is shown for people to come in and support you where you are, to help you not feel that way. And we learn from each other, and sometimes we are the glue that holds each other together. You will step into other stories through your path as well. The library that I went to would not be sustained without people, books, and stories to read. This school would not be successful if people didn't invest in to one another and read their stories that will go along with your jobs and life as well. And if you wish to share those stories for the world to hear, then they'll be passed along. If the world never shared the short stories of the books that I now buy in those shops as a 19-year-old, still, then I would have never got to know the authors of the books I now read from Brene Brown and Bob Goff to classic literature from C.S. Lewis to Fitzgerald, Dickens, Hinton, Steinbeck, and currently library hunting for Jane Austen. <laughs> I would never have known their stories. They would never have made the impact that they did on me. Your story matters, and the stories around you matter too. This school has invested into my story, especially my two guests, Danielle Ward and Lillian Hullet. <laughs> and many other great leaders, staff, and students here. They have been the bind that keeps these pages together. So when you go out into your next college or career, invest into those stories in the lives around you. Take a minute to read it, learn from it, and see that we're all just trying to figure out what it means to be human and find people who will do the same for you. Thank you. <laughs> Wow.
Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abby, for sharing your story with us. So let's give everyone a round of applause, all our speakers. Oh, my gosh. It's, again, like I said, it's, I know you were dreading the traffic, but look, it was all worth it. I told you it was. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, we wish you the best of luck in your future studies, your professions, and we know you all will do great things. And like you mentioned, you're going to be coming back. And again, like we always say, pay it forward. So on behalf of the faculty and staff at Lone Star College Kingwood, I want to thank everyone for joining us this morning. It's been a really special occasion. And uh, it's going to, I mean, I carry these moments a lot. So thank you so much. Uh, we hope you will leave here inspired by our students and with a renewed sense of purpose to continue, of course, paying it forward. And to the donors, again, we couldn't do this without you. Look at the lives that you are imp impacting. And so we thank you so much from um, all of us here, from our board of trustees and our foundation board and all the administration and staff and our chancellor. We thank you so much. Thank you.